Hello and welcome to the 83rd tutorial in the Cocos 2D JS version 3 series. In this part we're going to be looking at the UI page view element. We'll be using the source code from the 7th tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. Cocos 2D JS provides us with a UI extension which contains loads of UI elements enabling us to create great menus, hoods, etc. In this tutorial we will look at the UI page view element which allows you to create several pages which you can swipe through. These pages can contain other elements as well. Before we can code any UI elements, we need to first add the extension module into our project. Luckily this is just a modification of one existing line, so open up your project folder, open up project.json in a text editor, and then this line we're saying modules, you want to go to the end, put comma, quotation marks inside, you want to put extension, extensions and that's it that's all you need to do to include the extension module and now what we can do is actually open up our app.js and code our project so what we're going to do is just comment this out do var page view equals new ccui dot page view if you hear some drilling, sorry about that, just somebody's drilling next door. Okay, let's get back to this. Hey, no, no, no weird. Page view dot set touch enabled as we want to be able to interact with it. We'll put true. Page view dot set content size. And in here, going to see dot size. And we're going to specify the values of 240 and 900. So this is the size of basically our page view. We're going to set the anchor point. So page view dot set anchor point. And here we're just going to put 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So the anchor point is in the center of the element. Page view dot x equals size dot width divided by two. Page view dot y equals size dot height divided by two. And now what we're going to do is just create a for loop. I'm going to do var i equals zero. I less than five. I plus plus and inside here we're just going to create a bunch of layers and image views that we can add to the page view and that will be basically our separate pages. So we're going to do var layout equals new ccui dot layout and the reason we kept creating a layout is so we can add several items to this and then we can just add the layout as a single page. So that's a really cool way of combining different UI elements. So we're going to do var image view we covered image view earlier in the series new cc ui dot image view do image view dot load textures and in here we're going to specify res dot close normal yeah close normal with a png i guess it's a okay you can do image view dot x equals page view dot width divided by two do image view dot y equals page view dot height divided by two basically we're gonna center this now we're gonna do layout dot add child image view and the last element that we're gonna create and add to the layout is a text item which will just say what page we're on so var text equals new ccui dot text text dot string equals page plus i plus one as i starts at zero we want it to print out one if it's index zero if it's index four it'll print out four i'm going to do text dot font equals 30 pixels and for the font itself you'll be marker felt now we're going to do text.color equals cc.color 
And for this, we're just going to do 192, 192, 192. So it's 192 in the red, green, and blue. Text.x equals page, page view dot width divided by 2. Text.y equals page view dot height divided by 2 plus 300. And then extra task only to be able to make this dynamic so this runs on the different devices so low, medium, and high res. And we've set the position using X and Y here and here as well, but you can set it like this so dot set position. The great thing about this method is in certain instances, if you just want to affect the X axis, you can. Uh, yeah, I mean, X position is really simple just to affect the one position. So now let's do layout.add child text now we're going to do page view yeah page view dot add not add child but add page and we don't need to do anything else to like separate each page but what we're going to do is create an event listener so page view dot add event listener and in here we're going to do this dot page view at page view event we haven't done this yet we'll be coding this just in a moment and we'll do this dot add child page view now we're going to implement the page view event and this will be called every time we basically change pages page view event colon function sender type switch type kccui dot page view dot event underscore turn on now and in here I'm gonna do cc dot log so you'll print out what page we're on so this is great if let's say this is some sort of selection method because in our upcoming update for Glowbreaker we in the settings you'll be able to change paddles and we're using a page view uh, element so we can switch pages and when this event is triggered we basically set the current paddle to the paddle that the user will be playing with so we're going to do plus sender dot get cur which stands for current page index save that break and we're ready to run now as long as there's no errors so if we just open up terminal cd to our project directory run the cocos command Go and inspect element. Okay, we've got a couple of errors. Um, line 20 is moaning about. Line 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay, I'll put a colon instead of semicolon. Refresh the page. Line 31. Same thing again. Refresh. Line 31 is not a function. It's saying that's weird. So in the image view dot uh my bad it should be low texture. Okay, here we go, we have it running. So what we do, we have our page. It may look like we've got nothing there, but if we drag, as you can see we can drag, but we can't drag outside the value that we set. Yeah, the content size. So if we change this to, I don't know, mm, let's change this to 1280, that's quite big. As you can see now, we can slide it from a lot further away. But obviously, the amount we need to slide is a lot bigger as well. So it's going to change that back. So yeah, that's it. We have our page view. So if we just inspect element, and we scroll, say page two, say page three, I think, but we're on page four. 
and the reason it says page one and on the first one it says page zero because in computer stuff start at zero and the only reason it says page one, page two, page three and page four and page five visually because what we changed here you just need to plus one here or just use it as is. So that's it. That's how you use the UI page view element. As an extra task for you, try and create some cool pages with different layouts and elements. Use the elements we have covered, such as buttons, etc. In the next tutorial, we will cover removing a child. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for source code will also be in the description. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.